everybody. Uh, my name is Anaya Yala Yakuchi, just as you know how to read that, and I work for an organization called Internews. Internews is a media development organization. We support local media worldwide to provide them, uh, with, to empower them, to provide information to affected communities and communities on the ground to make better informed decisions. So I work specifically for the Center for Innovation and Learning, which was created in 2011. And the idea was to bring in, uh, basically, uh, to harness the power of new technologies and innovative approaches. In the past year, we have been working, setting up several crowdsourcing mapping projects. And we have been doing this without really, uh, uh, without uh, finding, you know, kind of like, without finding it easy. We wanted to bring together uh, information coming from traditional media with information coming from the crowd. And what we find out was that it was extremely difficult because we couldn't really make a sense of the, the information that we were collecting from the crowd, and we couldn't really understand how we could use this information without knowing the sources. And so we look how that other organizations doing that, and we found that, for example, the BBC User Generated Hub uh, was already working on that. Standby Task Force and OpenStreetMap are doing amazing work on verification of information collected from the crowd. And so in the past uh, um, couple of months, we have been working on a project that helped us condensing together and bringing together all our knowledge and lessons learned. This project is called the Lectua and is happening in Ukraine, is monitoring the parliamentary elections in the country. And what we uh, are doing there, we're not only collecting information from the crowd using social media, SMS, email, and web submissions, but we're also collecting information from trained journalists and from electoral monitors trained on the ground. And what we're doing is that we are displaying this information in two very separate layers on a map built by development seeds, where you can clearly see what are the information coming from trusted sources and what are the information coming from untrusted sources. But more than that, what we're doing is that we have developed something that we call our verification process or verification protocols, where we're basically dissecting every single piece of information coming in and trying to understand if it's actually a reliable information and if we can use it to actually inform decision makers on the ground. What we're looking at is three different components of a piece of information. The context of where an event is happening, the content of the event, and then the source that is giving us this piece of information. Let's say, for example, looking at the verification of a source. You not only look at who is this person, right, their bios on Twitter or on Facebook, but you're looking also at who are their friends, who are these people talking to online. The idea is that every one of us is leaving digital traces online. Those traces are, are building our identity, and our identity, or at least this, kind, this pool of information, can tell us if we are a credible source of information or not. In addition to that, what we can look at also is how do we actually verify the content of a piece of information that is coming to us. And in the verification of the content, of course, crowdsourcing and triangulation is extremely important. You can find out if other people are talking about the same event. But you can also look at very specific things, like for example, how is the weather like in a video? What are people wearing in a, in a picture? And what is the light like? What is the language that people are using to report that specific uh, piece of information? The idea again is that you can dissect a piece of information and trying to find out if every single piece of it is actually true. And then you look at the context. The idea is that no event is happening in silos. Every event is placed into a social, political, and economical context inside a specific country. And this is not only telling us if the event is true, is true or not, it's also telling us why someone would report that information in that specific moment and specifically to us, which is extremely important for verification purposes. So basically, in looking around, we have seen that there are very different ways to verify information, but everybody's kind of adopted its own one, and everybody's kind of bringing together the knowledge that they have, specifically for looking at media, for example, that have been doing verification for years and years. The main important thing that we're finding out is that, yes, falsification of information is always possible. But so is verification of information. If you know how to do it, if you're applying the right protocols, if you're using the right tools, you can always find out if an event is actually happening or not. And so today, what we're looking at is merging those verification protocols with machine learning, with automated system, with computing algorithms that are learning from us. And the idea is that verification is becoming not just faster, but also cheaper for organizations to do. 
our question today is not if you can verify crowdsource information. It's how do you make that information actionable, timely, and relevant for decision makers? Because otherwise, there is no point in collecting this information in the first place. Thank you very much.